today. I'm so glad that you're with us today. I'm, I'm always honored when I can testify that I've been in the presence of God. That, that's a place of privilege. I don't care how you slice the pie. If you can ever sense the presence of God in your atmosphere, wherever you are, it is a privilege to be there. We're in rare air right now. It's a privilege to be here. Glory to God. Luke chapter number 13. Luke 13. Let's see what we can pull out of the text today. Beginning at verse number 10. I'm going to be reading out of the NRSV version. And here's what the word of the Lord would say to us today. Luke 13, verse number 10. Now he was teaching Jesus in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. Verse 12. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are free from your ailment. King James Version says, Woman, thou art loosed. You are free from your ailment. Verse 13, when he had laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. How long did it take? How, how, how long did she wait? There, there was no way. As soon as he laid hands on her, immediately she stood up straight. 18 years of demonic oppression was broken immediately. Okay, it's, I, I need y'all to grab a hold to this. Immediately means in an instant, no wait, no pause no gestation, not no, let's see what happens. Immediately, she stood up straight. And the first thing she did when she straightened was she gave God praise. That, that's enough reading. To just, just for a few moments today, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to try to truncate this because, yeah. It's 11 o'clock already. I, I'm going to try to truncate this. I, I want to preach this subject, a twisted perspective. A twisted perspective. Y'all know how we do online. Just type that in the comment section. And, and y'all say it, say it in, in the room. Say a twisted perspective. A twisted perspective. It, it's important for us to gain a good working understanding of why this text is so vital to not just where we are, but also where we're going. What God is about to show us in the earth requires that we see it right, that, that we have a right perspective. It, it's important for us to know, he, right, right at the onset, this is important, for us to understand that until we acknowledge that we have a twisted perspective, we can never really adjust or be adjusted to a right perspective. i say that again. The first thing I have to do, if I'm going to get fixed, I have to acknowledge that something is, is amiss. Yes? So, so we, we have to understand then in, in this particular context that, one, we probably have been seeing some things twisted. And, and it, it, it's important to note that it's not just in our modern-day context. In the Old Testament, the Bible talks about the fact that 
um, in, in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, here's what it says. Uh, God says through Isaiah, he says, my thoughts are not yours. As far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how far apart our thought processes are. Then he says, my ways are not your ways. As, again, as far as the heaven is from the earth, we don't think the same, we don't operate the same, and the truth be, be told, we probably don't see the same. It, it, it shows us that there is literally a chasmic difference between how we think and how we operate and how God thinks and how he operates. Now, this is important because this same Isaiah who spoke in Isaiah 55, the word of the Lord that we don't think the same, also had to acknowledge that he had a perspective problem in chapter number six of that same book. Because he says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. He didn't just say, I saw the Lord. He said, I saw also the Lord. He had been going to the temple. He had been going to the synagogue. But he had been missing the presence of God because he was distracted by the impending death of a king who was dying from leprosy. So when King Uzziah died, his perspective shifted back to what it was supposed to be. God had been in the temple. He just had not seen him in the temple because his perspective was skewed. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what have we been missing from a twisted perspective? What have we not seen from a twisted perspective? Because the truth of the matter is, if I see it wrong, I'll actually do some things wrong. Can we be honest? In this modern day vernacular right now, what we're dealing with today is a whole bunch of people who have twisted perspectives. Over this last week, there was another school shooting and parents with twisted perspective gifted their 15-year-old son a gun. He clearly was unstable and they gave an unstable kid a gun. When he was found, listen to this, to have some twisted perspective sitting in class. The parents were called and told, your son ain't seeing this right. And the parents said, oh, just leave him. The, 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 the school said, just take him home for the day. If the parents had seen it right, four kids would still be alive. Seven others wouldn't be in the hospital right now. But that's what happens when you have a twisted perspective. If we're honest, a twisted perspective had people who were in law enforcement on January 6th storm the Capitol. How are you a defender of justice and you breaking the law? But when you have a twisted perspective, you'll do twisted things. Okay. A twisted perspective, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to try to move, but I need you to understand how bad it can get. A twisted perspective in, in this pandemic that we're still dealing with, we got Omicron, the just, the just uh, 12 or 14 cases now, I think it is, in America. And you have people who are going to COVID parties to try to build up immunity instead of just wearing a mask and getting vaccinated. It makes no sense. And they, they, they just documented a man who went to a COVID party to try to build up immunity, died from the disease he was trying to become immune from. But that's what happens when you have a twisted perspective. Now, let me be clear. I'm not telling you you've got to get vaccinated. But I'm telling you, science tells us at this point, it's best that you do. Simple. And if you don't, wear a mask. Protect yourself. But for, for God's sake, don't go to a COVID party. But these are the things that people are doing now because their perspective is skewed. Now, we have to be honest because some, sometimes our perspective gets skewed because of life. Is, is there anybody else in the room who's gone through a season where you didn't see it right because life hit you in the mouth? And I know I said mouth, M-O-U-F, a minute. When life smacks you in the face, sometimes you, you kind of lose your perspective. And because you're in pain, because you're dealing with things, because you lost a loved one, because your body is, is sick, sometimes we, it changes how we view things. Life can shift your perspective. But in the text today, we're dealing with a woman 
who didn't get hit by life, she got hit by a spiritual attack. A spiritual attack, the Bible says, literally bent this woman over so that she could not stand up. And for 18 years, she's forced to live bent over. Can you imagine every day trying to function and your body is stuck in a position it's not supposed to stay in? 18 years bent over. And here's the problem. If you're bent over forward in order to see anything right, you have to contort and twist your body in order to see things from a proper perspective. Can you imagine that after a year or so, she probably said, this is probably my lot, and she adjusted to the pain, she adjusted to the position, and she adjusted to the perspective. And for 18 years, she's living her life bent over. Every interaction twisted. Every conversation twisted. If she has kids, her relationship twisted. If she has a husband, that relationship is twisted. If she has friends, that relationship is twisted because she's been forced by demonic oppression to, to take on a posture that is not normal. The truth of the matter is some of us, if we're honest, have adjusted to some twisted perspective. And because we've seen it that way for so long, we believe that that's the way it's supposed to be seen. But I'm here to make a prophetic announcement today that God is about to help you look up. Do me a favor, just, just elbow your neighbor real quick and say, you're about to look up. You, you, you've been looking down. You've been seeing nothing but feet and dirt and debris. You, you've been seeing it wrong, but the Lord sent me here today to help you understand that what you learn to live with is about to be undone. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. I know you adjusted to having a twisted perspective. And I know you adjusted to people seeing you like that. But it was never God's intention that you live your life bent over. It, it's interesting to me because th there is something that, there's a lesson that we can learn though from this woman. Because not only is she bent over, but the, but the Bible gives us really good indicators that she didn't stop worshiping even though she was bent over. She kept going to church bent. She gets delivered in her routine of worship. Okay, y'all got to grab a hold to this. She, 18 years didn't make her stop loving God. Now, I, I don't mean no harm. Some of us, we deal with a two-week affliction and we start blaming God. This woman dealt with 18 years of being bent over. And, and, and listen, I, I understand. Listen, I, I've, I've had some really severe cramps. I've had major surgeries. I know what it's like to be in a debilitating position and to deal with pain long term. If I'm honest, probably for the last 16, 17 years, I can't remember a day that I've gone without some kind of pain. If I'm honest. But guess what I learned to do? Adjust to it. It was never God's intention that we adjust to pain. It was never God's intention that we adjust to being bent over. But in truth, while I'm waiting on deliverance, it doesn't mean I should stop worshiping. While I'm waiting for the breakthrough, and some of us have been praying. You know, I, 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 I know people who have been dealing with 20-year afflictions, but it doesn't change their pursuit of God. Now, and this is why I, I, I got I to gotta defend the woman, because for, a few, for, for 18 years, she kept going to church. She kept worshiping God. She didn't let being bent over stop her hallelujah. Mm. She gets delivered in church, which means she is coming to church. Now, probably because of her condition, she probably sat in the back. 
She probably was, you know, to a large degree, she did what she could. But the Bible says on this particular day, now I need you all to understand something. Jesus' ministry has, has just begun, and we don't know about how long he's been in ministry, but the ministry of Jesus was the door to her deliverance. She waited, on, but she had to wait until a deliverer could come. It took her 18 years, but she comes to church and Jesus is there. One more time, y'all missed it. She's been going to church, but this particular day, this particular Sabbath, this Saturday, she goes to church and Jesus is there. Now, I need you to understand that, that she's had a twisted perspective for 18 years, but one thing she never got twisted was, if he's here, I can get healed. Okay, y'all got to grab a hold to this. 18 years... And, and the Bible says that Jesus sees her, or it, it, the Bible says she appears in church, which means she's, she comes to church. Jesus is there, and she shows up at a convergence. It's a kairos. It's the right time, and the presence is there. The right moment, and the presence of God is there. And when she gets there, Jesus is teaching, and he sees her moving in the midst of the, of the synagogue. And he calls, he says, hey, you, come to me. Now, some people might feel like that's embarrassing. Like, why are you trying to make me walk up in front of all these people? But the Bible does not indicate that she hesitates at all. Why? Because she's been like that so long, she's accustomed to people looking at her bent over. Some of us are ashamed when the Lord wants to deliver us. How many of y'all been dealing with abuse? And, you know, we, we hide. How many of us have been dealing with some kind of addiction? And we hide. How many of us are going through an ugly divorce? And we hide. Truth of the matter is, you've been dealing with it in public for a long time. But you come to church and you want to hide. But this woman didn't hide. He called her and she walked up to him bent over. And I love how Jesus deals with this woman. The Bible says she comes to him and he says to her, you're free. Okay, y'all miss how, how, how simple this is. See, what, what we want, we, we want oil, we want tongues, we want spin around three times, jump up and down, shout hallelujah. We want click your heels. Because we feel like it has to be demonstrative for it to be effective. But that's a twisted perspective. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm giving it to you one more time. We think that histrionics is attached to deliverance. And because that's what we see from a twisted perspective, that's what we expect. So, if the, if the pastor ain't sweating, with, come here, Mike. Come here, come here Mike. You, you know, you, you got to wipe my head like I'm sweating real bad. If, if this ain't happening, oh, it's not, a, it's, it's not anointed at all. If that's not happening, it, it, he, oh, that pastor's not anointed. He ain't even sweating. He ain't putting forth no effort. But Jesus says, woman, you're free from your infirmity. It's so simple. It is so normal. It is so regular that we often have time, have a hard time trying to convince ourselves of what God is doing because it's too easy. But only a twisted perspective makes God work for what he wants to do for you. I am twisted if I don't believe it's God unless it comes through some, you know, with fireworks. But all he says is, woman, you're loosed. But something interesting happens in the text. She doesn't stand up. When Jesus says you're loosed, guess who he was talking to? The demon. Please, please grab a hold to this. 
The demon has her bent. The Bible says clearly that she's dealing with a spirit of infirmity. She's not just sick. She's dealing with a devil. She's dealing with a spirit. And, and while she's been trying to right herself, the spirit has had her controlled. Okay, y'all got to see this because when that, that word bow together, let me tell you this. That word bow together means to bend forward completely or to be completely overcome by a thing. Some of us aren't bent physically, but we are bent. Oh, boy. Some of us right now, if I look at you, I don't see your infirmity. But when you go home and there's nobody studying you, how bent you are becomes more apparent. And if we're honest, some of us right now sitting in this pew, sitting in the pews, some of y'all online right now are bent, completely overcome by a thing. And you've gotten so accustomed to being twisted. You know how to hide it when you come in public. You know how to hide being bent. You know how to laugh when the joke is told. You know how to shout when the music is going. You hear the click track, you can dance just like everybody else in the room. But you're dancing bent. Completely overcome by it. It's, it's normal for you. But Jesus says, woman, you are loosed. He told her, watch this, the devil that's been assigned to you has let you go. Okay, y'all, y'all he, here's the problem. Y'all heard me talk about her. You, you didn't hear me talk to you. So let, let, me, tell, let me tell you one more time. This, this, the Lord sent me here today to make a, a, an apostolic prophetic announcement that the devil that has, that has controlled you, the devil that has impacted your vision, the devil that has been working on your children, the demon that's been working on your mind, the demon that's been affecting your body has been told by Jesus to let you go. Okay, I need y'all to understand that this is not an emotional thing. You have to know what the Lord is saying to you. And I'm trying to tell you, you are loosed. I wish I had 20 people who really believe that to open up your mouth and say, I am loosed. You are free. You think that worship, you think that that, that when when Satan attacked the electricity grid in the church, you think he didn't understand that God had an agenda to bring you out? He was trying to distract you. But the agenda of the enemy is broken today. Yeah. You, right now, are loosed right now right right now you are free and, and, and the issue is you've been in it so long your body doesn't know how to respond to freedom your, your spirit is free but your body is still bent because you learn how to live bent But I'm here to tell you that not only are you free, but there's a touch coming. Good God Almighty. God is about to touch you. He's about to, Jesus is in this room right now. And he's here to give you the touch of freedom, to give you the touch of deliverance so you can stand up. God is about to take the bend out of your life. Good God Almighty. It's crazy that she's free, but doesn't look like it. She's delivered, but looks still bound. Isn't 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 it annoying how you can come to church, you know you heard from God, 
but you don't feel nothing? Am I, am I the only one who, who's ever, you know, you, I mean, the word is, it's a prophetic word, it's right down your street. You're like, oh God, you, you came to my address today. This is a word with my DNA marker on it. And I, am I the only one that's ever been in a situation like that? But then it's like, but am I free? Did he really, did he really break me out of this? But look at the text. The Bible says Jesus sends the demon away, but her body doesn't respond until he touches her. He lays hands on her, and him laying hands on her activates her uprightness. Jesus had to undo what she got accustomed to. Because the truth of the matter is, she was both... She was bent both by demon and by habit. Okay, let, let, let me try it again. She was bent by the demon, but she also was bent by habit. Jesus touches her to break her habit. Okay, see, I, I know this is hard. This is hard to take in because it, it means that to, a, to some degree, I learned to accept my condition. I received it because here's the truth of the matter. If we remember, I've told y'all this before that deliverance is a decision. Yeah, y'all remember? Please tell me you remember that because this is important. Deliverance is a decision. I can't be delivered unless I decide I want to be delivered. I don't care how many people lay hands on you. If you're in love with your condition, you are not going to be free from it. I don't care how many, how much oil you can be, you, the oil can be poured until your socks are drenched. And it won't matter if you are in love with the thing that's oppressing you. Deliverance is a decision. And until you decide to get delivered, you are going to be bound. So here it is. Jesus understands this woman doesn't want to be like this, but she is so accustomed to being like this that now I have to break her habit even though she's no longer bound so he says woman you're loosed you're free from your infirmity but she doesn't stand upright until he lays hands on her and, and I need you to understand that Jesus had to both loose her and untwist her perspective one more time she got loosed and untwisted one more time, did y'all catch it? Because you can be loosed and still twisted. You, you, you can be unbound and still bent over. Okay, let, let, I need y'all to see this. I, I gotta quit. She understood. Watch this. We know that faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But if you, you got to back up to really get the, 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 the real power of that message. It says, how can they hear except there be a preacher? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I, I have to be positioned to hear in order for my faith to grow. Yes? And when I'm positioned, then I need somebody who is authorized to actually say that word in order to actually activate my faith. So if, if you're hearing good word, but that person isn't graced to deliver it, it still doesn't have the effect that it's supposed to have. But this woman understood that if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna be changed, faith comes by revelation. So she had to position herself for revelation, which is why she kept going to the tabernacle, which is why she kept going to the synagogue, because she understood, I'll sit here long enough for the revelation that's necessary for my life to change to hit me. Listen to this. Jesus touches her. Immediately, she stands up straight. She does not have to think about what to do next. Praise was automatic. Okay, y'all miss it. Her praise was as automatic as her deliverance. 
Okay, y- y- y'all, y'all miss a good place to shout. I'm going to give it to you one more time. As immediately as she got delivered is as immediately as she started to respond to her deliverance. See, here's the problem. We, we want to be delivered, but we also want to be prodded into a response. A twisted perspective says, I only praise if they tell me to. A twisted perspective says, I only worship if they give me instruction. A twisted perspective says, I can only dance with a click track. But immediately, listen to this, she begins to praise God. I got to quit. Look at what happens. What you discover is that there are some people who are twisted by demons. There are others who are twisted by tradition. Because while this woman is being freed from an 18-year condition, the ruler of the synagogue is twisted by tradition. He's mad that Jesus chose the Sabbath to deliver. How can you be mad because it's ill-timed to you? I guarantee you if you ask the woman, was her deliverance ill-timed, she would say, absolutely not, it was right on time. But there's always somebody who has an issue with God's process for you. Okay, here's what I need y'all to understand. The, the, the Bible doesn't say she stopped praising. Okay, y'all missed it. That somebody is complaining that she's free, but she's still giving God praise. Hear me, I'm trying to tell you that when you experience the deliverance that God has for your life, even if there are people in your circle who said, I don't take all of that, don't worry about trying to defend your deliverance. Just give God praise for it. Okay, I need you to tell somebody around you, say, stop trying to defend your deliverance. Just live delivered. Just live free. Live unbent, live untwisted, live upright. I don't care if you respect what God did in me or not. Who cares if you don't like how God did it? Okay, I gotta quit. The man says, how dare you, Jesus, free somebody on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, listen to Jesus, watch this. The woman is shouting, praising, giving God praise and thanksgiving. Jesus is defending her. Jesus says, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Because he says, there's nobody in this room who didn't loose their donkey and lead them to water to drink. The same, watch this. Now, I need y'all to see it's two things. Number one, you're a hypocrite because you're telling me I worked, but you worked too. But because your work fits your narrative, it's cool for you. But secondly, secondly and more importantly, the same effort it took for you to lose your donkey, that's about how much effort it took for me to free her. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all got to grab a hold of this. Yeah, Jesus is saying, this wasn't even hard for me. I didn't expend any effort I'm just being me and when I show up demons tremble when I show up demons run away when I show up freedom is a part of the dynamic of my presence but Jesus says something I'm done Jesus says something that that blows me away he says she's a daughter of Abraham she's supposed to be free okay y'all y'all missed it Jesus says she is a daughter of Abraham. She's not supposed to be bound. What is he saying? Everybody who's connected to Abraham is supposed to be free. Okay, now, now, the reason why some of y'all ain't shouting is because you don't know who you're connected to. The Bible says that Abraham is the father of our faith. That we're all brought into the sonship of God. Watch this under the umbrella of Abraham through Jesus which means that I should be free because of who I'm connected to you're not supposed to be bound if Jesus is the name you use you're not supposed to be bound if Jesus if that if that's the name you call on if you pray to Jesus it's no reason why you should be bound you're connected to a name that's, that is that watches has power to make you free. 
what am I saying? I'm telling you today that you showed up on the right day. There's a convergence. The proof is in the pudding. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And I'm here to announce, I don't know who you are, but I'm here to announce to you today that you are loosed, you are free, and your perspective is being untwisted. God is giving you a right perspective. He's watch this, speaking to your ear so your eyes can correct itself. What, what does this mean? It, it means, hear me, this is what the Lord told me. He said, I need you to, I need you to know, son, so when you go to church on Sunday, he said, I'm going to have you lay hands on people. Now I know we're in coronavirus and now we got our protocols and I know we ain't supposed to be touching people, we ain't supposed to be close to people, but, but the Lord said there is an activating ingredient in laying hands. And here's what I'm not ever going to do. I ain't never going to be scared to do what the Lord told me to do. Never ever. Now, if... If you're not able to be here, I want you to extend it. I'm going to pray for I'm going to pray for our online community first because you're not able to be here in the building. And I want everybody to straight like just point at one of the cameras because in this moment there are people right now who need a virtual touch. So we're sending the power of the Lord Jesus to your house. We're sending it to your house, to your job, if you're sitting in your car, wherever you are. We're sending the power of the Lord to you now and in the name of Jesus we declare according to the word of the Lord that not only are you loosed but you are upright not only are you free but you have a right perspective not only are you free but that thing that has been having you bent over that has been controlling your life we cast it out in the name of Jesus Somebody say, it is so. I need y'all to say it like you mean to say, it is so. 